Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and today I'm bringing you the next part of my month-long Pride celebration with my review of A Fantastic Woman. All month long, I am bringing reviews for landmark, historic, really great LGBTQIA++ <laughs> films that have impacted the culture, impacted our community throughout history, all of which are films I have not previously reviewed here on my channel. And all of this will be in conjunction with fellow YouTube movie review creators and personal friends of mine who will come and join me to review each of the films. So today we are discussing the reigning Best Foreign Feature winner from the Oscars 2017, A Fantastic Woman. And to help me talk about this fantastic film, I'm so excited to welcome Jordan from A Cinephile with a Microphone on to help me discuss the film. So without further ado, I'm going to let Jordan give you his take first. So... Take it away. This year's winner for Best Foreign Language Film, A Fantastic Woman Follows a Transgendered Woman Who Must Face a Transphobic World in the Aftermath of Her Partner's Death. It's a beautifully told film with a mesmerizing lead performance by Daniela Verga. And it's so easy to root for our lead because not only is she grieving, she is constantly being bombarded with harassment from even those who she's supposed to trust. It's also a gorgeous looking movie with this wonderful visual style that's damn near hypnotic. Both a powerful grief drama and a deeply unsettling study of transphobic bigotries, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. And that's it from me. Thank you so much to Larry for allowing me to contribute to this series of reviews and I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much again for your time and effort and willing to be a part of this month full of reviews. I so appreciate that you decided to join the club for this. Everyone, if you are not already, make sure you head on over and subscribe to Cinephile with a Microphone. He provides really in-depth, amazing reviews all within about a minute of your time. So that is pretty spectacular and a far cry from the long-winded reviews you get here, but just as effective and just as entertaining. So head over there and subscribe to his channel if you're not already. And also make sure you follow him over on Instagram. He's like a legit photographer. It's all about that nature photography and his shots are gorgeous. Now, Speaking of gorgeous shots, let's talk about a fantastic woman. And I'm going to kick off this review by talking about how gorgeous this film is. I'm actually a bit shocked that it wasn't really mentioned and talked about more for Best Cinematography when it came to the 2017 Oscars, because the cinematography in this film is flawless. Extremely beautiful, just superb. Every single shot in this movie is beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic. And more so than just being beautiful, every single shot is so interestingly composed and like perfectly composed. It all just looks amazing and fits the tone of what needs to be said at that time. It really is just a feat in cinematography and I think that is one of the biggest strengths this film has going for it. Another is Daniela Vega is so good. What a charismatic, real beautiful performance from Daniela as Marina. I thought she was absolutely fantastic and she just was a captivating star. You never wanted to take your eyes off of Daniela. She demanded your presence always and I thought it was just a really star turning performance from her. But I think this film really highlights what it's like to be a trans person in particular just in the world and gives it kind of a day-by-day -day feeling of just those undertones you are constantly getting. The subtle ways that the world makes everything just a little bit harder for you in the smallest ways, but they add up real quick. And then, of course, we get to points where it's much more overt homophobia that rears its ugly head. But right off the bat, from the doctor to the police officers, you know. You know what's going on here. You can feel it, and you see these obstacles being presented. And the scene in which she is asked to disrobe to have her picture taken, I think was one of the most heartbreaking scenes 
I've seen in some time. I really just, I felt for this woman because, I mean, that, that was humiliating and degrading more than even humiliation. It was just a complete degradation of her as a woman and as a person. And to see her get bullied into revealing herself in such a way was just horrible. Um, it was it was something that really resonated with me hard and I, I was I was like, oh gosh. And in many ways I think that was the most damaging scene to Marina as a person, even more so than the legitimate physical assault that happens later. Because it's it's so much more. And I think that's what this film really captures is the the trans experience in a mundane situation and kind of opening your eyes to the everyday just BS you gotta go through when you're when you're trans and it's it's a really impactful film in that way and you obviously sympathize with her because never once in this film are you thinking any of what these people are pulling is for any other reason than she's trans and that's really that's really a feat in and of itself as well is we are transported into this woman's situation you're scoffing at these people like ugh, give me my dog or ugh, i've been living in this apartment ugh, why are you thinking i'm a prostitute like that just constant scoffs at these people and their accusations even when you see the barista at the coffee shop looking at her and that whole exchange. There are just so many little nuanced things that are placed in here that just, again, show you how it all adds up and it all just builds up having this constantly thrown at you, having your identity and yourself as a person being questioned is just crazy. People saying, I don't even know what I'm looking at. What even are you? Or seeing people trying to be fake polite and fake nice in your face and then finally just coming out and saying that you're a perversion or you're disgusting or I don't want my child to see you. It just, it's, uh, it's crazy. And even the good people in the film, even the ones who clearly get it to some point, aren't really willing to do anything about it. Like the brother of Orlando. Clearly he gets it. Clearly he sympathized with his brother and loved his brother and in turn loved the person his brother loved, but is never willing to really take that stand, even when he knows what's right. And it all just adds up to an emotionally raw and real film that really resonates so beautifully. When it comes to negatives on a fantastic woman, I don't really have many. I think it was really just such an immersive experience that transported me into someone else's life. But I would say that I think sometimes in the narrative itself, things are picked up and dropped rather quickly without any sort of good resolution to them. Such as the investigation itself. It was in there, it was pushed in and really hard in the first half of the film. And there's kind of just a throwaway about, do this and you will never hear from us again. And we never hear from them again. Like, nothing is ever followed up on. Nothing is ever done further with that experience. And then I think there are a couple moments where it felt a little bit much. When the daughter cries at the funeral. When Marina enters, I was like, literally, why is she crying? Is it because her mom got up and started screaming or... What's going on here? Of course, the spectacle, I can believe, because more important than the family grieving and just moving on and ignoring someone, they're going to make a spectacle to make you feel like garbage. They're going to make a spectacle to, to make you know that you are less than. And I understood that. I just didn't understand, why is this little girl crying at the sight of another human being? She, she wouldn't even know, you know. <laughs> of course, that, that goes into parental manipulation and what she's been told. But it's like, mm, I don't know. The crying in particular just got to me as disingenuous. But, or when these people go roaming and go pick them up and drop her off. Um, when that assault takes place, a bit of it felt like convenience as well. But really, these are nitpicks. Because overall, this is a fantastic film that I think everyone should watch watch. I think definitely trans people, I hope that this accurately does kind of give you representation 
on a bigger Oscar winning level. And for the rest of the community, the LG, the B, the I, the questioning, all of us, it's something to really watch because unfortunately there is still a lot of transphobia within our community. And that really is a shame and it's really disheartening. So I need the rest of the community to be watching films like this to feel the empathy of what somebody else has to go through just to be themselves. And maybe even to be reminded because I think this film can be relatable to, to the rest of the community as well because a lot of people have been ostracized by this. The words like faggot and fudge packer are all used in this film toward her. Just to be reminded that we're all in this boat together. We all go through similar experiences and especially in 2018, trans people just go through it a lot harder than the rest of our community. They have a lot more to deal with if we're being honest and we're being blunt about it all. And I think it's films like these that really open the doors to empathy and show you experiences and help you feel and live the experience that are really important. So not only is this important for the trans specific community for representation and to see such a high quality, happy ending film on screen, it's important for the rest of the queer community to see, to gain that empathy, as well as the straight community to see, to gain that empathy, and maybe even to have a better understanding of what we call microaggressions and how they degrade other humans and how they really are harmful to people, no matter how small you doing them think that they are. So this is a fantastic film that everybody should watch from a filmmaking perspective down to just what a beautiful story it is. This is a fantastic movie. So once again, thank you to Cinephile with a Microphone for joining me in reviewing A Fantastic Woman. Everyone, make sure that you head over to his channel, subscribe, and follow him on Instagram. And while you are here, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and leave a like if you liked what you saw. Also join the discussion. Have you all seen A Fantastic Woman? What did you think of this? Film. Let us know in the comment section down below, or of course, you can always hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Mwah! Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!